To make your Microsoft Excel dashboard much more interactive, all you need to do is to actually learn how to utilize caption to support what you have on your chart in order to make the business easy to read. So over here, we have this particular caption here, which says the month of June, July, and February, which were our top performers, generated up to 42.8% of our revenue. And this will definitely change based on what we select from here. You know, let us go to New York and select mobile payment. Now it's now 40.9% and it's, it's actually on January, you know, June and May. Can you see it right now? So this is what you need to actually do. Learn how to actually create caption to support your chat. And the second thing we're going to be talking about in our next video is how to actually use, you know, this option button to switch to different view. Over here, we are looking at the percentage, not more the absolute value, just like what we have right here right now. So we see the percentage that is peculiar to every single month. And over here, we're looking at month over month change. So now, our revenue dropped by 39.5% and it went up by 57.7% right here. Can you see it right now? So this depends on what we have selected from either of our slices. So let me quickly show you how to create this particular, you know, caption you have right here. So you have a very simple data right here. So is the month and as well the revenue for every single month. So what can you do to actually, you know, create the kind of chart you've seen, you know, previously. So make sure you click on it and go over to insert. From there, I'm going to click and uh, let us go with a line chart. So we can go with a line chart just like this. So we don't need the total because we're going to create in a dynamic you know, one for it. So over here, you're going to actually use hide all field buttons on the charts. Then we take off this very one and this axis should be turned off because we're going to be having a data label. So quickly, the grid line should be turned off as well. So this looks better right now, right? But the thing is this, you can make it much more better than this by double clicking and go over here and we can scroll down until we find smooth line. Something like this would make it much more better. So this is what we want. And right away, we want to actually have a caption for this particular chart right here. And to have the caption, let me drag this down. Or still, if I bring this up right away, let's say I'm going to bring the data label up. So before we can see, you know, better way, we have to do it this way. And quickly, let us have a format for it. So we go to home, we do this comma separator. So nicely done. So now it is not going to be very easy for you to quickly spot the top three months. What we can do is to actually write a function that will support that. So we are going to come over here and we type in, uh, let me type in one, two, and three. So then over here, we have to extract the top top revenue or you can use top three revenue anything you want to actually use and we are going to actually say the month for the top three this is what you need to do so how do you extract the top three revenue with the large function you can do that quickly so large so with my large function i'm going to select this particular area here and uh because I'm going to be copying this down, we're going to do F4 key. Then we hit our comma. We're going to reference this particular part right here. Then we hit the enter key. And now here we go. We have this. So how can we know the months that generated this particular, you know, revenue we have right here? So it's very simple and easy. This is where we are going to be using two function. The two functions we're going to be using is called um, index and we're going to be using match, match functions. First of all, let us look at the work of the index function. So index function is looking for where what we want to retrieve is sitting. Do you get it right now? So we are looking for something from this particular area here. 
So it's asking you, which row number do you want to retrieve something from, from this particular highlight you have made? I'm going to say for the first row, if I close and hit my enter key right now, it's returning January for me. And this will change accordingly if I put what? If I put two or three over here, three gives me match. And you can make it dynamic by coming over here to put your four now. So double click over here and some kind of highlights this area. Click on this. And every single time we change this one to eight. So now because there is no 84, it has not worked. So I'm going to use just eight. Now, can you see it's August? If I go for 12, so what is this telling you? This is telling you that this helps you to retrieve something from a particular position. And how do we generate a position number instead of us manually putting this? And that is where the match function, you know, comes in. So the match function now, let's say this one here is index. Index. So let us go for match function and learn quickly how to use the match function. For you to learn how to use the match function right now, we can actually do match. So with our match function, the match function is looking for a lookup value. What are you looking for? That is the first question. What do you want to retrieve? Its position. So we want to retrieve the position of this over here. Then if I put my comma right now, it's asking me for the lookup array, which means where can we find this particular number? It can be found right here. So now with my comma right away, it's asking me if I need the exact match or something closer. So for the exact match, I put zero and I close and I hit my enter key. The position is seven, right? So let us try to see if that is true by coming over here to turn this into seven and hit my enter key. It's giving me July. Let us track July and see if July correlates with what we have right here. And it does. Can you see how easy it is for you to understand the index and match function right now? So understanding the index and match function would help you to combine them together and make sense with how they work. So now, can you see it? So if I decide to say, okay, I don't want to retrieve in this position, but this particular position here, and I hit my enter key, it's giving me two. For we to be sure right now, let us turn this one here into two. Remember this one here does not have any formula or function behind it. So I'm just going to do two over here and let us do that. Okay. Can you see February and the value for February correlates with what we have right here. So now with this, let us combine the index and match function to actually do something right here by doing equals index. And for the index, what do we want? We want an array. The array means where what we want to retrieve into this particular row that we currently sit is actually sitting. This is it here. We want to retrieve anything from here. Now, because we're going to be copying down, we have to quickly do F4 key to lock it down. Then with a comma, right now, instead of us to define our manual position, we can make it dynamic by using the match function. So the match function comes in here. So with the match function right now, it's asking us for the lookup value. What do we want to retrieve its position? Now we want to retrieve something here, right? So with this now, it's asking us again, where is the lookup array? The array means where do we have this sitting? So over here, we find this. Then we do F4 key again to lock it down. So we do a comma. Over here, we're going to do zero for exact match. And we close for the index and the match as well. We hit our enter key. Can you see it right now? If I go ahead and copy this down, it has given me this. So we don't need any of those ones here again. But remember, you cannot wipe away this one. If I do, nothing happens again. Everything is gone. So control to bring it back. These numbers here, they are very important. So I can just say this one is actually some kind of uh, position. Whatever, just name it anything you like, whatever you want. So over here, this is what we want. I can make this header bolder by doing control B. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is that what is the percentage representation of this particular three months we have right here? So I'm going to do a percentage of top 
three months. So for me to create this particular percentage of top three months, all I need to do is very simple, is to do this some function here to summarize these three months. So once done, close and divide using the slash with the sum of the total revenue we have generated. Can you see it right now? Then you close and uh, you hit the enter key. Control one, you can convert this to a percentage. Can you see it now? This is what we have. So next right now is for we to create what I call caption. So let me just write caption here. So caption, this caption will definitely make our chart to stand out than just having just this chart right here. So how do we do this? It's very simple. I'm going to show you one function that will save your life when you want to do something that has to do with concatenating different text together. And that function is called text join. Okay, let me just make it understood. We're going to be using two functions inside here. We're going to be using text join. I'm going to be using text function, right? So not text join again, text function. So the text join here helps us to actually create some kind of concatenation with just redefining our delimiter just once. And over here, this one helps us to convert this to percentage. Do you see that right now? Okay, let us quickly come over here now and start writing. It equals text join for the first time. So for the text join, it says delimiter. Delimiter is the space or what is between two words. It's as easy as that, right? So now we're going to do double quotes, space, and you close it. So putting a comma right here is going to ask a question. Do you want to ignore spaces? It's very important. Put in that comma and skip that. That is all. Okay. Now it's asking us for the first text. What do we want? So what we want to do right now, we want to say percentage of this particular percentage right here want to add text to it. But right now, I am going to do this without this particular function for you to see the work of this function later after all. So I'm going to reference this particular percentage right here. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to actually do a comma. So with my comma, it's asking me to put my second text. I am going to do inside double quotes because Excel does not understand text coming in here, like if I type in of, it's going to start giving me some kind of suggestion of some functions, which I don't want. So for that, you have to make sure you come in here and do uh, of our revenue came from. Now, this is where we have to start putting in our month. So I'm going to close this and put my comma again. So this comma is switching me to the third text. I'm going to reference this very one right here. You got it right now. So for this one here, I'll do another comma. And inside here, I'm going to do double quotes. And uh, I'm going to use a comma inside it. So why do I use double quotes and I have a comma inside it? This comma is a text that cannot be repeated without the two double quotes because Excel will see it as an error. So for that, it has to come in between this double quotation. So under comma again, for text five, I'm going to do this. So comma inside double quotes, I'm going to do and close. And under comma again, I am going to select this. Can you see this now? Then I'm going to do under comma again, inside double quotes, I'll do under comma inside it, then another comma again. To switch me to text five, then I'm going to do best. So the best should come into this, or oh, this one is optional. I can decide to, okay, let me not confuse you. I can just still do this. So now comma, we do best performing month. Then we close this and if I hit my enter key right now, can you see what we have? We have huge number for the percentage that we have. The decimal is too much. There is not any form of percentage formatting. This is some kind of 
you know, awkward. So now it's giving us 40.3% of our revenue came from July, February, and May. So that is it. So over here, what you can do is to quickly come over here and before this particular cell reference we have here, we need to use this particular function that is called text function. So for the text function, it's asking for the value. Your value should be this G12 right here. And you put in a comma, then inside double quotes, you're going to do 0 0.00. You know, you put a percentage right here. Percent, then you close and hit your enter key. Uh, we actually flub somewhere. Let's see what happens. Okay, now as you can see, it's giving you some kind of warning that something is wrong. And if I go back now, I can see over here, I should have closed the double quotes I opened here, which I have not. I'm just going to hit my enter key right now. And it's giving me 40.36%. If you don't want the decimal places or you just want one, all you have to do is to actually come over here and do away with one zero. Now it's going to approximate one from six to three and two before. Can you see it right now? So 40.4% of our revenue came from July, February, and May, which is our best performing month. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do, which is our best performing month. This is what you can do. So let's say we want to include this here now. I can come over here and click on this and uh, activate my title. No, the main title, chat title over here. I'm going to come over here to view, then formula bar. I come over here now, put my equal sign to reference this very one. So this cannot be our title, but just for me to show you how easy it is for me to actually read what is here. So now this is what we have. Let us add some couple of sliders to see how this will definitely behave. So right click and bring the show field list. Then over here, if I scroll down, I can uh, let us add slicer for payment method. Right click, add a slicer. So by location, right click, add a slicer. So I'm going to shift this one. It can cover here, no problem. So here we go. So anytime I actually make a selection here, it changes what we have right there. So if I clear all the slicers, and this is what we have. It's just 37 point percent and with this one now it's changing and this is what it is this is going to give you much more better look of what you have here let us quickly go back to the dashboard we've seen previously over here if you look at this right now can you see how it is so the next thing i'm going to teach you how to do right now is actually showing the absolute value and it's not going to be just like what we have right here over here right now if i should actually make this some kind of um a bit smaller so it starts looking some kind of awkward to read the figures we have in here so how can we make sure we transform this figure to look like 10k 20k 1 million 2 million just like what we have right here like this if i go for absolute value so this percentage this is the absolute value here can you see it right now so you, you might be thinking it's easy but I wish you could actually try this yourself before I come up with the video that would actually help you to do this. And as well, the month of a month change, I'm going to teach you how to actually get this created. And in the next video as well, we might look at how to highlight a particular point in our chart, just like what I have right there. You can see it's highlighting the top three weekdays. And over here is giving us the bottom highlight quickly. And all of that, we can actually make sense with our chart better than this, than just leaving it to the end users to figure out what is going on in the business. So I hope this helps.